Well, hey there. I'm going to show you how to do my Star Nova stitch. This is intended for a stitch video, so I'm not going to be showing you how to do a completed project, but I'll certainly give you some tips and guidelines that I've seen so far. So I had worked this up in this swatch, and this is Mary Maxson Marvelous Yarn, and I think it's called Sweet Stuff or something, but I don't have the label. And um, this is what the good side looks like, and it's uh, certainly no slouch, but I didn't think it was showing the pattern be uh, very well because there was so much color in here. But the right side is what I really like and what looks like Nova's. And you can see the texture, but yeah, it's hard to see the pattern in this color. So I decided I liked the way the texture came out in the pattern, but I didn't like what the color did. But it was good for a swatch because it showed me that it isn't curling. You can see the edge stitches are right on the side. They're not curling one way or the other. And all I did was knit it over and come back. And uh, it's not curling there. Here, it's a slight bit coming forward. So you could just, it's fine enough. It's not going to curl up on you, but I decided when I did the other one that I would put a couple rows of owl eye on the bottom and top um, to finish it off. And I was happy it wasn't curling and I didn't have to use any pearls and that it would be such a fast stitch. So I decided to try it in this blue Mary Max, some marvelous, and this one I have the color. <laughs> so the yarn is this is a nice, it's made in Turkey, 270 yards, 100% acrylic, 200 grams, and uh, you get 250 meters, and the color of it is Berry Blast. So Berry Blast, and it's a bunch of blue shades with some red through it, but it's got a lot of more solid colors, so I thought it would show the pattern better. It's a nice yarn to work with. It's got a nice stretch, so I didn't really need it. I'm not moving yarn um, in a very hard manner or anything, but it's always nice to have a little bit stretchier yarn, I always think. Okay, so it is a bulky yarn, a number five yarn, and I'm on a three quarter inch gauge. This is the loops and thread set that's all molded. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you the stitch. So I did um, that crochet chain cast on that I like so much and so um, I have it on my channel if you want to find out how to do it. It's pretty easy to do and then I just did a couple rows of owl eye. I think I, I ended up here so I did one, two, three. I did three rows of owl eye because I wanted to start my stitch pattern coming from that, that side and so that gave it a nice base so that this stitch is exactly on the bottom. It's not curling up anywhere at all. So it's really, really nice and flat. So that's where I wanted it. My sides are done the same as I did it on this swatch. And um, I'll show you how I did that. So what I did is you're going to be working in two peg pairs and you're always going to be working the same two pegs on one of the rows. So what I did was I just, um, I have my one end peg. If I if you have, have a two end peg you want to use for this pattern instead, then you'd have your two end pegs. But you're going to be using even plus whatever your end pegs are. So I use stitch stitch um, the needle knit stitch marker in the small size, and I marked number two and three peg, and then four and five I didn't mark, so I know they go together. Then I marked these two. Um, these two so I know they go together. So I just separated them out so they go together all the way to the end and then so I knew what my end peg was. I threw a purple stitch marker there. So I've already started doing this row so I'm just going to show you how you treat these stitches going this way. It's really really easy. I'm going to get close so you can see it but all you do is you knit over peg one. So always think of your two peg pair as peg one and peg two. And these are the two without the stitch markers. I just did a U-wrap. You'll see me looking like I flatten it because I'm very loose and a flat knit is like a U-wrap if it's loose enough because uh, it's basically you're, you're, you're going over the peg the same way. So if you did a really tight U-knit it would look like a flat knit. <laughs> but anyway I'm loose so go over and I'm just going to knit this off. Then I'm going to take 
the yarn that's on this peg and it's nice and loose it can be as loose as you want it to be actually and I'm just going to move it over here and I'm going to slightly snug it up I don't want to get too tight because I don't want to pull my stitch one way or the other just snugging it up and then I'm going to take this yarn put it back over peg one and two and wrap them so now what you have is one wrap that's going over peg one which is empty besides for the wrap and you've got the two wraps here and then you're just going to knit these two off and that's it and you go to the next peg pair you're just going to knit peg one pick it up and move it over to peg two and your yarns over here and then you're just going to go over them and knit them off and that's it over Oop, forgot to move it <laughs> looked wrong so you always want to see that you have those <laughs> those yarns here <laughs> I usually catch myself when I make a mistake, <laughs> which is a good thing, actually. Okay, so I just go over this, move this over, snugging it up a bit, and over them, and knitting it off. So as you can see, it's pretty fast. Knit it off. Don't let it catch on that peg there. <laughs> and then just wrap it and knit it off over to this peg, knit it over, move it, <laughs> there we go, and knit it off, there we go, and then all I'm doing on the end peg, so that's why you can see um, it, it's uh, not curling at all, I just am doing the knit it over and come back. I actually like that because it gives you a tighter edge than slipping, so whenever I can I just do that. Okay, and I'm going to do a row of owl eye going back, which is the same stitch I did here after my cast on. So to do owl eye, the first peg, you just go over it in a U-wrap, knit it off. Then you come and re-wrap around it and go over peg one and the next peg two and knit them both off. Whatever peg you end up at, peg one again, just knit over it and peg two. And that's it. That's your row two. It's owl eye. Your row one is when you're going the other way. So it's easy to remember what stitch you're doing because one way is always the stitch where you're working in the two peg pairs and moving, moving the stitch over. And the other way is always just doing an owl eye row. So if you haven't done Owl Eye before, and I'm going a little fast for you, I have lots of videos with Owl Eye in it, so there's lots you can watch. So basically that's all there is to it. Really, really fast pattern. But after we do a couple more rows, it'll be, you'll be able to see more stitch pattern when we look at this one. So, And then all I'm doing at the end of the row is just the same thing just this I'm coming back and then I need a knit on here so I'm just doing my knit moving it over and wrapping it and knitting it off and so that's the way my row is going to be second peg pair knit it over take the yarn put it on peg two snug it a little Come around and knit it off. So pretty easy to do. And knit it off. So what you get, so this is the right side and it's actually a nice knit. So you can see the pattern a lot better here. It looks good. If you were doing it looser, it would be uh, like this. If you were doing it lacy with a, with a thinner stitch, it would look a lot more like this, and it looks pretty nice. So that side will look nice, but this is the stitch. This side is why I named it Star Nova, because there you go. There are the Star Novas. 
what they look like to me. Yeah, and of course most Nova and most star names were taken, so Star Nova it became. My husband actually named this one. Okay, so there's how it looks like if you're going to have it thicker. Um, just the way this is going to be when I take it off the loom. Or if you used a thicker yarn and a little bit smaller gauge, you'd have a really tight uh, stitch you might want to use for a blanket. But you're going to have a lot of texture. A lot of texture with this stitch. If you are to use it more lacy, you'll have less texture, but you'll still have quite a textured stitch. This is going to rise up and it's going to show you these star patterns and what it looks like. We come close and look. It looks like you have two stars, one star bursting out of another. There, I think you can, you can see the stitch there, what it looks like. So I think it's a really cool look. I'll be using this side <laughs> as my good side. <laughs> and this is my other side, but this side is nice too. Nothing wrong with that. This would be really good in a shawl. Uh, you could use it, like I say, for a blanket or anything. It's really nice that it doesn't curl. So that's a good thing. So there you go. Basically, that's all you have to do to do this stitch. I'll have other projects if they're not, they, they may already be up by the time I release this, but I'll have other projects in this. But I wanted to do one in a really thick yarn so that you could see what this, well, um, stitch looks like when it's tighter. And it can certainly be tighter than this. When it's off the loom, it's as tight as this one because this is exactly the same yarn and I did it on the same loom. So it could be a hat. It works it, it works just as good in the round because you're still doing one row of that stitch, one row of owl eye. All it will do is maybe make some of these a little straighter instead of as angled, but um, it will look uh, almost exactly the same. So it can be used in the round too. So it's nice that way, quite versatile. Uh, it would also be really nice if you're using a plain stitch and you just wanted to do a few rows to have some texture come up. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this stitch. And uh, until next time, we will see you.